we have uh, the state regions of the VAC in the Dodge and Mac We have the state president of the uh, USD uh, United States Daughters of 1812. We have the a, a representative, at least, from the Daughters of the Union Vets. And she's also belongs to the other things. And uh, Pat Carpenter uh, belongs to all of these plus a lot more. So she's very aware of what's going on. And Leslie Harris is the is the uh, president president yeah of uh, colonial dames of the 17th century. And so we're really um, an interesting an interesting group. Have lots of interesting things. I kind of put together a basic idea so we kind of all have the same thing. And when we get done, I've got I've got a presentation I can make or if I can answer questions about how to how to belong to all of these organizations or, or who to contact and that kind of thing. So uh, it it doesn't matter. Does one of you, you one of you, you ladies want to start first or you just want me to take it the way I wrote it or what do you want to do that? You want to talk? You know, restart. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think it should be one of the older, not older yeah, people. Well, <laughs> seventy-one. Seven seventy one. I am not alone. <laughs> I think the organization that have older affiliation in America should go. I'm I'm the youngest in civilization. I say that the is that what we're okay. Okay. So which is the oldest? Which, which is the oldest group? Is that oh, yeah. Yeah. the oldest group? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, that puts me first, I think. Yeah, I think you're okay. the oldest. Okay. Yeah. So I'm Leslie Harris with Colonial Dames of the 17th Century. I am the state um, president, and because that is by default, we only have one chapter at present. We're trying to grow the organization, being, so we become an organized state and that requires two chapters we're on the verge of that but we still have a ways to go and um membership you should have the eligibility form with you she passed that out and that um covers the the timing of our organization at 1701 or earlier so um mayflower uh, jamestown those types of organizations you're basically a shoe in but um, our organization was actually founded later than several of the other organizations. Like, um, it wasn't founded until 1915. And that was um, just a group of ladies who met at the International Genealogical Congress at the Panama Exposition in San Francisco at that time. And they decided, this group of women decided that they would have um, an organ, create an organization that focused on those founding of the earliest colonies time. Um, they also unique to only a couple of organizations is they put a focus on coats of arms. And in our, um, our state chapter, we have um, more than one member who has um, coat of arms that go back six or more Kings of England. And it's predominantly English uh, ancestor, or English armorial ancestry, but we also, in my case, I have both um, from England and from the United States, or from the colonial era, because one of my um, Mayflower ancestors also has, uh, was granted a um, coat of arms, and that was, um, I just had his, head, his name in my head, and it's gone. Um, Oh, he went overboard and he came back on. Uh, yes, yeah, so anyway, there are American coats of arms and there are British coats of arms, and sometimes you have both. Um, there is a library of the coat of arms at the Colonial Dames headquarters, which is uh, a building in DC that they own, and it is on the National Historic Register. So um, again, with many of the organizations, the focus is put on historic preservation. 
and creating a database or resources that are available for easy genealogical research for those who are interested in that era. They have um, a fairly extensive library and it's always a goal to go there instead of the DAR library during Continental Congress and vice versa during the National Convention of Colonial Dames and um, Heritage Week in April. Um, they also um, have a, a history of service towards veterans in particular and offer scholarships to post-secondary education. So fairly standard with certain things. Um, our dating goes probably back the farthest for the United States or for colonial America. And um, in our presentations during my administrations, because I'm in my second, I've tried to put a focus on um, history in our lessons. Our next meeting is next weekend, and uh, the presentation is about the Brides of Jamestown. So that is my spiel. If you have any questions on the forum, I am the LESDEH lineage email, and then our um, junior registrar who has extensive registrar experience is Trish Spencer at the pause um, email address. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, I, when you asked the question, when we went back to, I thought you meant when we were organized the organization. We are unique. We're Daughters and Founders and Patriots of America. We actually have two ancestors you have to have, and you can only have them on either your mother's paternal line or your father's paternal line. So like my daughter, she can go in on my Eddie line, which is my main name, but her daughters would not be able to join. So it's quite a unique organization, but you have to have somebody that was here in the um, colonies between May 13th of 1607 and May 13th of 1687. So you are older. Yes, I, when you said older, I thought you meant the organization. And then you have to have somebody that fought in the revolutionary period between 1775 and 1784. And like I said, it has to be a direct paternal line. So my maiden name was Eddie. So I can go back on the Eddie line. My mother's name was Henderson and her father was born in Scotland. So no, there's no way. But my daughter is rather unique because she can have a supplement. She qualifies through my line, my Eddie line and her father's carpenter line. So she could have both. So her daughters will actually be able to go in one more generation because of the fact that she could go in on both. It is a, like I said, it's quite um, unique because of the fact, and sometimes I think we're a dying society because of the fact that you have to have that direct line back and have somebody that was here very early and then someone that fought in the Revolutionary War. The purpose are patriotic. We ate in hospitals during the times of war. We award medals to the ROTC, both um, college and high school levels. Um, we respect, we promote respect for our flag, and we award um, achievement of students for American history, commemorating spatial historic events by enacting memorials, remembering outstanding individuals in our history, and collecting and restoring and preserving records for of our very early ancestors, because at the time, some, many of us have problems finding information about. So it was founded by Miss Eugenia Washington, the great grandniece of George Washington, so the one of the founders, and two other ladies. Um, I think I don't have anything else to say, I don't believe, but I'm open to questions. What is your name? Patricia Carpenter. Oh, okay. And what is the... Uh... Daughters of Founders and Patriots of America. Okay. EFPA. And I, at least, at least we have five groups that are represented with information out there. So if you have more questions or you need to pick up more information, please feel free to come out and see us. We're along the wall. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Okay. Uh, go next. Yeah, Gayla. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
I am Gayla Hoy, and I'm the state president for um, the National Society United States Daughters of 1812. You don't try to say that three or four times. <laughs> um, and because, like Colonial Dames, we're a very small organization, um, we have one here in one chapter here in Topeka, which is Call Valley. We have another chapter in um, the Kansas City area, which is Lieutenant Thomas Blair. I am also, at, at this point, all of the officers that belong to Call Valley are also state officers. We just took the same job straight across the board because we're still trying to get Lieutenant Thomas Blair back up and running. So um, in order to um, belong to 1812, you need to have somebody that was um, between 1784 and 1815. So it was it was right after the um, Revolutionary War and then to 1815 when um, the War of 1812 complete was completed. We do a lot of the same things as every other patriotic organization. Um, we promote patriotism, preserving and increasing the knowledge of history of the American people and uh, marking historic spots. We often ask each other, um, as one of the main things is to preserve and, and, and educate about the St. Michael and All Angels Church in England. And we were like, why are we doing that? Well, the reason is, the church was built by the French prisoners held by the English at Dartmoor Prison and was finished by American War of 1812 prisoners. The first American prisoner arrived on April 2nd, 1813, and eventually totaled 6,553, of which 271 are known to have died there. So that, that's why that we support that we also um, provide reading materials to the American Merchant Marine Library Association, which is a nonprofit, non sectarian organization that represents a unique and necessary service to those who spend their lives at seas. The Public Library of the High Seas sends books. Um, to the American flag and allied vessels. So kind of like a floating library, yeah, per se. Um, we support schools and um, again, we give JROTC and ROTC medals um, to the, we, we to the Topeka area and then um, the Kansas City area does Kansas City. We've also branched out, we do Junction City also, don't we? Mm -hmm. okay. And we do, um, K State and KU, so um, they they have a program. Yeah, yeah. If they have a program. Um, our current national, well, it's it's President National. Um, her goals um, are to enhance. One of them is to enhance the technology and the communication. And Mary and I spent some time last year and helped rebuild the database of all the known patriots and combined them because they had maybe the same person having four or five numbers instead of all being one person. And so it's a pretty neat um, tool to be able to use now. And they're doing some more of that kind of thing and revamping some more of their website. For instance, the magazine is now online and it's a free, um, it's not free, it's included with your membership but um, you don't pay extra for it, but it is now also on the website. As a state president, my project is to not only increase membership, but to locate research and create a listing of all the War, War of 1812 Patriots who are buried in Kansas. And uh, Find a Grave has been great. Neil Handley in the Kansas City area has been great to give me information past um, 
1812 daughters have been great with the information that I found in the regents, um, in the president's information that was given to me. So um, I made a, a database and a spreadsheet that I've got um, about 80, I think, I think about 75 actually men that I found and um, whether they have a find a grave or whether we have pictures. A couple of weeks ago, we went to Leavenworth for something. And so I went by one of the cemeteries but it was padlocked. I couldn't get in to get the picture of the stone if there is a picture. But um, so that, that's that been quite an undertaking, but it, it's been very rewarding. It's been exciting. And I found a few that were not on the list that have been given to me. So um, I, if I have enough time, this is my second year uh, out of three, but if I have enough time, I want to expand that to the real daughters and the granddaughters. And real daughters is somebody whose father fought in the War of 1812, but they belong to the organization. And then their granddaughter would be just that their grandfather fought, but they belong to the organization. So um, I also have some um, a notebook that that was one of the things that the Daughters of 1812 put together all the different organizations or all the different chapters and when we had several chapters. So I have that to, to help me kind of go by and see if there's any others. So um, <clears throat> we have three um, guys that are buried at Topeka Cemetery and two at Rochester that are that we know of. And um, several years ago, our Cobb Valley chapter laid a wreath at four out of five of those. We didn't know about the fifth guy that we did. And so um, that's the next. <clears throat> Does anybody quick? Because about 1812. Yeah. And I apologize, Nancy, because your DAC happened before 1812. Well, that's uh, okay. <laughs> We're kind of all in this together here, really. Yeah, <laughs> except I can't be a pen or a paint. <laughs> well, the uh, National Society of Daughters of the American Colonist was founded in 1920 in St. Louis, Missouri. This society is based on descendants of men and women who were residents of America when it was under foreign government as colonies prior to July 4, 1776. So you're talking when they landed, 1607, is that it? To prior to, so it'll be July 3rd, 1776. In Kansas, we have eight chapters and 180 active members. The motto is past, present, and future. And they say yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. <laughs> The object of this society, of course, is patriotic, historical, and educational. Uh, we research the history and deeds of the American colonists. We record and publish those. We commem commemorate the deeds of the colonial interest. We foster love of the United States of America and its institutions to obey its laws and venerate its flag, which the em is the emblem of the power of the United States of America and its civic righteousness. Our committee, uh, committee activities include national holidays. We participate in patriotic activities and presentations in the classroom. We reinforce the history of the early years of colonization in America. Uh, we use how the American colonists used their ideas and strengths that led our country towards a fight for freedom and unification under one flag. Uh, today, in our current chapters, we prepare care, care packages for our active duty men and women overseas. My state project is to do with libraries. We want, I want to empower our youth through literature. We want to reinforce the youth with self-confidence and stability, the power to succeed, to overcome adversity, and to have social acceptance. Uh, so your sources, well, to be a member of the society, your resources for research is where do I start? Well, cemeteries are a good start. They never move. 
you can always find somebody there that close that belongs to you. Your libraries, your Topeka Library here is wonderful genealogical section on Daughters of the American Colon Colonist lineage books and materials. The Kansas Historical Society is another research library on the state of Kansas and access to the internet to access, can to access the Kansas Quarterly Magazine, which is a wonderful source document for your patriot. Of course, your courthouse records, birth, death, marriage, and land records in your different counties, and then your Midwest Genealogical Library and Independence Preserve is also a good research tool. So all of these wonderful resources to research on your journey to solve your family history before 1776. Thank you so much for having me. I, I put together, since in a few minutes I'm going to be talking about the Daughters of the Revolution, um, I didn't want to spend too much time, but I did want to, to give you some basic information that I'm not going to be talking about. Um, the Daughters of the American Revolution, is a nonprofit, nonpolitical volunteer women's service organization dedicated to promoting historic preservation, education, and patriotism. It was founded October 11, 1890, and incorporated in 1896 by an act of Congress. The DAR's motto is God, Home, and Country. Any woman 18 years or older, regardless of race, religion, or ethnic background, who can prove lineal descent from a patriot of the American Revolutionary War is eligible. Uh, our President General's project, National, is honoring our nation's history. Uh, and she's looking at the DAR ties of service and friendship are brought together as we celebrate our nation's rich history and diversity of experience within our own communities. As the daughters of those who sacrificed so much to secure our freedom, we enjoy the honor of seeing that each milestone leading up to this nation's 250th anniversary is celebrated. During this administration, they're going to look at the Boston Tea Party, which was December 16th of 2023, Patrick Henry delivering his Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech, March 23rd of 2025, and the battles of Lexington and Concord, which ignited the American Revolutionary War on April 19th of 2025. The States Regents Project is a legacy of liberty. See how it carries over. In recognition of our patriot ancestors who achieved American independence, they, she chose a legacy of liberty. Um, she, she chose a torch, it's a symbol, it's a beautiful torch. And I don't know why, it's a pen, and I don't know why I didn't. Oh, I have one in there. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a mandy dandy ice cream cone. Yeah, it just it looks gorgeous. beautiful. It, it is gorgeous. I could have brought my scarf for it. It's one it's of it. And her scarf not only has that, but it's also that entwined I didn't think uh, it. sunflowers. So that makes her, I mean, that even pulls in the Kansas part of, of the idea. It's very pretty. Uh, the flames reflect the burning desire to seek new learning op opportunities. And by passing the torch, we recognize that our leadership roles are illuminated as opportunities for service. And that is one of the big wishes this year. Not that we haven't been doing that for the past six years, but this year, uh, that is also a big push. Is, is almost every meeting we have uh, is some sort of a service project involved in that even for you know 15 to 20 minutes of the of the meeting uh, it does encompass the the dar building you know the B dar i think it's called a complex uh, encompasses an entire city block with an appropriate address 1776 d street northwest in Washington, D.C. It's one of the world's largest buildings of its kind. And this, the, the first time I went to D.C., the bus driver that was taking us around said it was very 
clear about is it's one of the world's largest building of its kind, owned and maintained exclusively by women. One of the nation's premier centers for genealogy. If you can, and I'll talk more about that on being online too, uh, if you're looking for materials, uh, lots and lots of materials. Uh, it's a beautiful place to, to visit as well as to conduct research. Uh, they've got in the library, there are over 140,000 books, 250,000 research files, thousands of manuscript items. They've got collections specializing in Native American, African American history, genealogy, culture. Uh, they have databases. Some of them online, but they even have some in the in the library that you can't get to from online. Uh, they've got expert research staff and research services, and they even have research events. And in order to to deal with those, uh, it's nsdar.org, and or you can do kansasdar.org. If you want to find out more about the, the Kansas group, uh, very, very informative information. Okay. Uh, I'm behind your turn. You ready? Yeah, okay. I wanted community. to go last. I didn't yes. realize I was going to follow the biggest organization. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, you know, the one thing I definitely need to mention to all of you, which most of you may know, is here we have a past national officer for DAR. That's right. So, and over here we have a past state officer. Were you a state officer? Oh, yeah. Are She's they trying? Are they twisting right. your arm? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they did last time, but I got to be this first. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a district director. Okay, and you know this lady is just. These ladies are all DAR dyed in the wool big time. <laughs> I'm just a little piddle in the pond when it comes to them. Um. DUV is Daughters, National Society Daughters of the Union Veteran, and it is older than DAR. And I didn't know this until someone got in my face at a DA SUV, no, pardon me, DUV meeting and said, we are older than the DAR. It was organized Memorial Day, May 30th, 1885. And when I talk about Daughters of the Union veterans, we're talking Civil War. So they got right on the ball after the war, 1861 to 65, and organized this. It was incorporated, I believe I didn't take time to write that down. I think it was 1895, and then in the 1900s charter or something, something like that. I don't much care about that, and I don't think any of us do. The whole idea is the whole idea to organize it was begun a long time ago. The Grand Army of the Republic, GAR, am I saying that correct? Recognizes only this women's group as the women's group for that particular war and time in history. To, for any of us to qualify for that if we chose to join another lineage group, you can only do so much in your lifetime. <laughs> to do that, it is strictly lineage from way back like I go to me, to my mother, to her father, and I then I go all the way back on the men, um, five generations, I think. Um, there are various ways, obviously you're all, they're all aware, it's the same sort of documentation, um, vital statistics. Now, obviously when I got back to my 1860 people, I got turned down for DAR, and you could have seen steam coming out of my ears when this happened, and I'm going, oh, oh, I know I can do this. I wonder if there's an organization, and that's about the way I was, too. You know me. Well, <laughs> anyway, so I got on there and Googled lineage societies for Civil War, and up this popped, and it was Kansas City over in Lee Summit, a lady by the name of Linda. So I contacted her and she sent me the information pronto. All I had to do was use all the information I already had, put it on a documentation summary and send it to her and in I was. This particular 
tent instead of chapter, as they're all called, we are a tent, was begun in 2013 in Lee Summit. I went to Missouri because it's closer. We do not have one in this area. I have heard two different stories. Edie Flickinger, who is in there, is in my organization with maybe carpool, we chat back and forth. I saw online we had two tents in Kansas, in South Central Kansas, which is probably being one. She says, no, that's not what the national publication said. So I'm going to do some research in the next week or so before our meeting and find out for sure. And I may have to call the national and find out because we are not nearly as big. We do not have near the money or funding that DAR does. We are a little drop in the bucket when it comes to them as far as funding. So we have to pick up and carry our own. But I will tell you right up front, the national officers in this group do not float away, never be heard again. They stay with the organization. I have personally spoken with on the phone and by email more than one time with the national webmaster in order to have information recorded for our members that are coming in new. She is a past national president. And it was pointed out to me, that's what those initials mean after the name PNP. I start looking at the publications and there are many of the past national presidents that stay with this organization. They do not just kind of do a little thing in the background that's don't take insult because I know this lady does <laughs> stuff constantly also in DAR. I am impressed with those women and their dedication and they're gonna keep it going. And they're gonna make sure that we new people understand it because I've already gotten one lecture about how things should be done. <laughs> so understand it is an organization that cares a great deal about it from, from the top down to the bottom. I think that's very important to any organization you join. Find people that you know will support you, they believe in you. And even if they don't know you, they'll talk with you and help you. I think that's critically important. I belong to that Missouri group. It's an hour and a half down the phone, uh, down the road, pardon me. We, I taught Kansas history here out at Shawnee Heights for a number of years. You look at the period 1850 and it's just nothing but wildness, craziness. I'm surprised any of us live through it to come to this time in history. It's just really something. That's what's carried on over into this. And it's in a Missouri group who they're very much aware of their history as well. The people in that group want to keep their history alive, even though when we go to a meeting, we don't sit around and talk about it, but they are involved women. Um, there are, as I said, or maybe I haven't, it's a much smaller group than DAR. You're in the million, I don't know how many members. We are a few thousand in the country. Missouri has five, instead of chapters, they're called tents. All of them are working on increasing membership. I'm going to tell you right up front, my group in Lee Summit is the most growing lineage group I belong to. When I joined, the group started in 2013 in Lee Summit. Some of the women from Springfield came up, decided they didn't want to drive from Kansas City to Springfield. They started a group up there. I started driving down to see them, driving all by myself, walking into these ladies I didn't know at 2015, two years after they started, there were eight to 10 of them there and they were all still members of the group, except for one that's passed away this year. That's how I got my job. Anyway, she, they, how do I say it? In 2015 is when I joined and then I think maybe 12, 12 of us or so, we are now almost 50. It is exploding in the last six months to a year and a half. It's just a haywire. I don't know where these people are coming from, but there's huge interest. When I've been sitting out there, three people come by to speak to us and they were all interested. I am amazed and I think it has to do with we're finally taking more interest in what happened here. And I think it has to do because we're in the middle part of the country we were solidly involved with that and 120 some, 140, 50 years ago, it, we're finally, it's our gray hair, 
finally getting interested in it. That's what I think is happening. To join the direct lineage group, as I said, I went back. You cannot get a vital statistic on my soldier who was in his 40s, I think, when he was fighting in the war. It's not going to happen. So what I had to do was write Iowa State Historical Society pre-COVID had enough people to go look up all his info in newspapers from where he was from. And I got all that information. And that's what I used to start out with. I have since picked up uh, documentation for my second veteran from NARA. And I think that's very helpful. It, it also gives you a sense of who you are and what they did. Um, I think I'm getting close. Our particular group, Every when you join a group, you want to know what they do, what they're interested in. Oh, I need to read this. We obviously are centered upon our Civil War Union, the Northern people. When I read the brochure to become or to come for this, this is the phrase that stuck out to me, and it applies to this day and age. I was sharing this with Nancy when I came up and said, Nancy, can you believe this? It is support the union and preserve it. Pretty simple. And then establish freedom for all. I don't think I need to say any more to apply to our day and age to this day. And maybe people are zeroing in on that. Um, we do not have like DAR has uh, 20 or so various committees and interests. So one of our ladies who is, I don't know, her IQ's got to be 150. Mm -hmm. It's beyond me. She has organized a book club. She has helped put information together. And I think it's going to be up and going by 20 April, April or May of next year, 2023. She has put a book together of quilts in our family. I put together one. I added my family from South Central Kansas as well as one that a lady made for me here in this town. There's an exact copy of it over in a historical museum. She has done that. They are putting together a book of stories of our veterans. I haven't done mine yet. They're on my case about that. I'm trying to ignore it, <laughs> but they are gonna be doing that. So we're trying to emphasize small things that we actually can do and try to draw in as many as we can. Like all groups, we like people to participate. And that's the key is when we're in a group is can we get people interested? So anytime you join a group, please bring ideas into your, I don't care what group it is, and, and say, hey, this is something we can do. All of us, somebody here mentioned going to Midcontinent. I think it was Nancy. I absolutely love that. I was talking about that with the Hoyts lady. If we go into Kansas City, can we go over there? Neither one of us have been there very much to do any research. My DUV lady, bless her heart, nothing stops her. I mean nothing. I have her on my cell phone. I talk with her once or twice a week. She has gone into mid-continent. Our group is going to have about a fourth. I think it's a fourth. I hope it's not a half. About a fourth of those glass cases on the way dedicated to. I don't know if, I don't think it's our chapter. She's trying to make it Daughters of the Union veteran um, and just display information about them. Hmm. And so I've, I've told her, take some of those books. Oh, she started a book club. H how many of you have read a historical book this thick every month? She has started this book club and I swear to God, Sometimes they just kind of gossip and other times they really, really discuss these books to try to learn more about the war. This lady is, bless my heart, I'm scared to death that <laughs> she's going to expect other people to do as she has done. Look up all these gravesides. There are people in every organization and bless Sherry's in our group going in and taking up these things. We got to keep our group going. So look for that in every group you join. She started the book club, the quilt book, the ancestor book, and now she's going to have stuff out there at Mid-Continent for us. So I don't care what organization you join, look for that type of interest and please add to it yourself because we are a part of who you all are 
And just keeping up with all of that, I think is vitally important. I talked to her on the phone, talked with her husband last night even, and these two ladies quite often, and Nancy, whenever I get the chance, sorry, I don't know you. <laughs> you know, there is that sort of thing and it's a camaraderie and we really appreciate it. And I'm sure I skipped something. I substitute teach. So in between looking at kids, I wrote my notes. So I probably forgot something, but anyway. Three minutes left. Okay. I just wanted to interject one thing. The Daughters of Union Veterans and the Daughters of Confederacy after the Civil War were two distinct enemies of each other still. And DAR was organized to combine those two groups. I did not realize that. Yes. Thank you. I will, I will tell you in our DUV group, I bet a good half of them are also the Confederate ladies have joined. I haven't, and I was explaining to those gentlemen over there why I haven't, and I'm not going to, but a, a good half, especially in Missouri. Yeah. And like Edie out there has family from Missouri. A lot of people in here do. I'm glad to know that. See, that's how we all work together and we're a part of it. And one resource we've not mentioned with all of the veterans is Fold 3. Yeah. They have they have great records and you can find if you can find a pension on there. Um, I can personally recommend Brian Reinhardt. He yes. goes he goes yeah. back I've done that to Nera well. and it cost me a good penny, but we found out information about our our Civil War guy that we didn't know. Lots of good information there. So so those are just a couple of really good resources also. Yeah, then that's that's uh, NARA, um, fold, fold three, fold three, and fold. Of, I know that yeah, that was what I was going to say. Fold three, you can get in this library up in the Topeka room for free. You don't have to pay. If I do it at home with the, my convenience, it also takes money on my pocket to to each year to to join. Uh, and TGS is the same way. It's it's free. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Well, just a comment. Um, you can access all three online through the public library site. So. From home. Mm -hmm. From home. Oh, oh, really? Yes. Uh -huh. Good. Well, I don't want to be paying anymore then. Don't say me. Don't say me. Well, and sometimes uh, if you don't have a library card, but, you know, put in to get it, then you can uh, just do a search on it and you'll find it. You might also want to mention Heritage Quest. You know, oh, yeah. Heritage Quest is yeah. also. Well, that's what we're going to but, but there's so much. There's so much out there. If you just know what it is. You're going to be look at it. Yeah. yeah. And I did, did you guys make up a, a copy of that? I, I didn't deal with it. Uh, I, I made up a, a copy uh, of things. Uh, what you might look for if you're going to be in a living society, kind of what general knowledge is. is that It'll be on the website. website. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then and then at the bottom, I I put unacceptable groups. They I don't know any group that's going to accept the, the things at the bottom. They just if it's not if it's not referenced back to something that is uh, that is acceptable. Uh, you might as well hang it up and it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna fly. Uh, on the next the next round here, I'm gonna talk about some acceptable things that I haven't, but I just wanted you to realize there's a whole bunch of stuff that's unacceptable that it, it's just a waste of your time to, to hunt that stuff down. Uh, in all seriousness, that's why I went to, and I used it for my DAR thing. It's not what blew my DAR thing out of the water the historical society in which that person lived. And they were, I mean, it took six weeks, I think, to get it back. I think I had to pay him a little bit for it, which are probably double now. But it was very, very helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. I couldn't have done it without him at that time. Okay. Any questions? Well, thank you very much. And we thank are you. out there and we're more than willing to answer questions. Some of our ladies I know have to leave, and that's that's okay. But there'll be enough of us out there that can answer almost anything we want to know. Or if we can, hey, most of us, most of us, we're teachers or yeah. <laughs> somewhere. Yeah.
<laughs> we'll find your information for you and let you know. Get back to you. Sounds great. Thank you guys very much. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us.